Do you know Don Cherry was from Little Fallon? Yeah. Okay, so Sasquatch Prospector here. We are in Kingston. Former capital of Canada, or the United Canada's back in the 1840s, before it changed to Montreal. But this is the pump house that uh, we're gonna go see. So this is the original building from 1851. Uh, it's Victorian style building, Romanesque uh, style architecture. So the old stonework and stuff. Looks kind of like a Roman building, right? It's kind of the idea behind it. So this pump house is pretty important in the history of Kingston and in general, the infrastructure of the town, right? So in 1832, there was a cholera outbreak in the community, which is basically contaminated water, right? Um, a lot of sickness, a lot of problems ar arose. So affluent community in Kingston tried to do a, uh, a waterworks slash, you know, drainage sewage infrastructure of their own, but it didn't really work out and it was kind of haphazard and didn't really have many resources. And then there was a big fire in Kingston in the 1840s that, uh, it decimated the town that was cost at the time it cost 70,000 pounds worth of damage so 70,000 pounds in 18 1840s I don't even want to think about how much that would cost but you get the picture so a bunch of engineers and city planners got together and decided we'll build a waterworks um, to supply water clean water to the town so you know people didn't get cholera and uh, good sewage and stuff but also for fighting fires because Kingston didn't want to suffer another fire and have to basically rebuild itself from the ground up. So they built this waterworks and there's only six waterworks in the entire of North America remaining that are of this design and they use steam pumps and the steam pumps basically pump water out of Lake Ontario that you saw there uh, and into Kingston basically. It doesn't function anymore, it's ornamental but it's a museum now so we're gonna go in and take a look and learn a bit. Okay, so this is the pump. Like these are, this is the actual pump. These are known as Osborne Killy pumps. So they're pretty revolutionary. Um, there's actually a steamship uh, around here that it was built by a rich astrophysicist. He uh, made a lot of John Brashear, Dr. Brown, John Brashear. He made a lot of contributions to uh, science and astrophysics. But he actually built a steamship yacht and it used one of these engines on it. Uh, but you can see this is, this was what supplied water to the whole of Kingston. This was the waterworks. See, Osborne Keeley water pump. It was an evolution of the Newcomen engine, right? So we covered the steam engine and we're gonna go look at a steam engine in Kingston later, but it was the progression of the Newcomen engine, right? So Thomas Newcomen made the steam engine and then the pump that the steam engine was modeled after, sorry. And then these guys, Osborne and Killy, came up with this water pump, right? And you can see this is the pump, right? Like the actual pump itself. This is where the water would come out. The manifold, right? And it was these, these pumps, basically. These two pumps brought water to the whole of Kingston, right? They used to have a walking beam engine here back in the day, but it didn't... It wasn't, it wasn't effective, right? It wasn't an effective design. So the Osborne Killy engine, which is what we're looking at here, that came into existence, right? But this is what supplied water to the whole of Kingston, right? And it was mainly used for fighting fires and supplying clean water, right? Because of the big fire, the Venturi meter. The old gauges. But that was kind of the initial purpose of the steam engine, right? It was a pump. That's what it was. You can see these old pictures. That's the inside of the boiler, right? Waterworks staff member. So in the, they had the walking beam engine up until the 1890s and then in the 1890s, two much larger engines. Oh yeah, they don't build stuff like this anymore. I probably was iron at that stage. Yeah, these are from like the 1800s, right? Like 1890s, they said they installed these. This is all original too. They got, they restored all of this. And this is what supplied water to Kingston for over or almost 100 years. The fire department used this. Toronto.
but it's like I was saying, right? It's the same concept that Newcomen was using, right? This is pretty cool. So the guy that designed this, he basically designed it as a double, it's a double acting pump. So you can basically suck water in from the lake and then pump it out to the city at the same time. Here's where your intake would be from the lake, right? So the water would get sucked in through here, through the lake. The series of one-way valves that open, one-way valve is pretty self-explanatory, right? And then as the piston moves back and forth, it sucks in water from the intake and then these pipes up here and pushes it up into the reservoir, which is up there. And then these pipes, this Y fitting you see here, that would be water going to the city. So it's double acting pump. It serves two functions at the same time. It's pumping water in, pushing it up into that reservoir up there, and then pushing it through this Y fitting out to the city. Same with these two here. This is an even better example. So the intake would have been here, right? This is the reservoir. There's a series of one-way valves in here. This piston, powered by this pump, the steam pump, moves, right? Moves the water, suck. And as it sucks in, it pushes water out through the here into the Kingston, right? And that's how that would work. And that's how the pump worked. So the sanitation and disease, right? Like I was saying, they had a big cholera outbreak here. This big problem, and then the fire too. That was the other, the other reason, right? And then just water, people wanted water. You need water, right? Water is an essential part of being human. There's a model of the Osborne Killey engine. It's a fancy plumber, man. Well, it was like, it was like the prestigious job back in the day, right? So that's that walking beam I was talking about. Well, this is the original pipe, I think. This is the original pipe, though. the boiler right these would have been your fire boxes and then this was the actual boiler itself right you can see the bricks that's what that's how they insulated it in the building was through the bricks they still use that in in places they still use uh it's called refractory insulation brick masons still do that to this day canadian locomotive engine company we're gonna go see them in a bit but it was just, it was all interconnected Everything, everything is all interconnected. Canadian Locomotive Company. This was Kingston's bread and butter man back in the day. We're gonna go see engine 1095 later. The railway workers on the railroad. Yeah, so the steam came from the boiler room guys, right? So you see those pipes, steam would come, would come down into this uh, needle valve and into that needle valve, right? That's called a needle valve. And then down into these, into the vein, in the chambers, right? And then the sliding valves, right? And the, the architecture, like I was saying, right? It's absolutely incredible. And initially when they built the facility, they only put the pipes in 200 feet and they had issues with the water and it not being clean enough, right? So then they had to extend it out 1,200 feet. And the pipeline that they used for the intake is still, uh, it's still somewhere out there actually. Like divers have actually gone and found it, but yeah, it was initially 200 feet and they wanted to extend it to 1,200 feet just because, uh, wasn't, the water wasn't clean enough, right? So they needed to do that. So, but it was all steam powered. It's basically what I, try, what I was trying to do is show the effect of steam powered machinery over the years. That's why I wanted to demonstrate like steam pumps, steam engines like locomotion, power, and then steam generators, right? For power, power generation. So in Cornwall, we covered steam power generation, right? They were using 
coal to make steam to power electric turbine generators. Here, we're seeing the pump house, which they use to pump water to fight fires and uh, supply people with clean water. That's the chimney. So we saw the boilers, right, where they they make the steam to power those pumps that generates the, the water, that pumps the water out of the lake. So that chimney there, that would have been the stack that all the, all the exhaust would have come out of, right, out of the boiler. Okay, so this is the last gas lamp. That was, um, 18, as you can see on the pole, 1847 to 18, 1947. Kingston, because it was the capital, had gas lighting, right? So uh, that's fossil fuel lighting, right? They had it up until 1947, and then they, um, they got electric power um, in 1887. Kingston Electric Company uh, put in electric lighting and then gradually phased it out. But in the rural areas, they had gas lighting for a long time because it just wasn't possible to, uh, to get the infrastructure out. But this was the beginning, guys, of lighting in... Uh, in Canada, like we this and arc lighting as well, but that's a different story for another time. We had, but this is the gas light, this is the, and this is the original gas light from back in the day. This is the old train station, right? So I said Grand Trunk Railway, Kingston used to be a big train community, train station. That's uh, that's part of it. Old school British telephone booth. And then this is the steam engine, 1095. Kingston had a big locomotive works, right? Canadian Locomotive Company. This was one of the last locomotives they ever built. It's a, it's a D10 class. So in railway notation, the way you can decipher what, what steam engines are is by their drivetrain, right? And drivetrains are numbered. So like this one, for example, is 460. The steam engine will be 460. So when you when you when you're looking and classifying steam engines, there's a notation, right? And the notation goes for like the number of the number of leading wheels, the number of drive wheels, and the number of trailing wheels. So do you see here how there's two on this side and two on the other side? That will be four. There's three drive wheels on this side, three on the other side. That would be six. There's no trailing wheels under the bottom, so it would be zero. So this is classified as a D10. So four and six, four, six, 10 wheels, D10. And how you would notate that in the railway lingo is a four dash six dash zero, right? And then this is called a tender. And this is what supplies the fuel. 12 tons of coal, 5,000 gallons of water. That would be imperial gallons to IG imperial gallons, right? This is the length of the train, but this is called the tender. And that's how you would open up to access the boiler right in the front. Anyways, that's it for now. More to come in a bit.